Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In Surah Baqarah verse 2, Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدَلْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and the translation of this verse is, this is the book about which there is no doubt, a guidance for those who have taqwa. Now, when the month of Ramadan is about to start, we all get ready to start reciting Quran. We start searching for different online courses, programs, anything that will help us understand the Quran so that we can feel a connection with the Almighty. After all, every Muslim knows that this is what you're supposed to do during this month. But the truth is, very few of us actually feel anything. We do study the Qur'an, we do read translations, we do make extra effort, but spiritually, we don't feel any different. We don't feel like the Qur'an is talking to us or that there is a radical transformation. We started our journey in the month of Ramadan feeling empty, and we end it also feeling empty. In fact, this is the exact reason why so many of us recite and study the Qur'an during Ramadan only. As soon as the month is over, our study of Qur'an is also over. If the Qur'an had spoken to us, if we felt spiritually connected to Allah, we would never leave the Qur'an. So where are we going wrong? Is Allah angry with us? Are we amongst the misguided who will never feel spiritually enlightened? You have to understand that the Qur'an is not a book of magic. It's not like you will open it, read it, and suddenly feel this connection with God. That's not how it works. The Qur'an is a book of intellect and wisdom. It has a message that appeals to the heart and the brain. That's why Allah keeps telling us in the Qur'an to ponder, reflect, think, analyze, examine, ask questions, do tadabbur. Surprisingly, we are not just told to blindly believe and accept everything. We are told to question then think deeply and try to find the answers. The more we do that, the more we can understand the verse, and that's when the Qur'an starts to talk to us. That's when it becomes intellectually so interesting that it's hard to just let go. For example, let me ask you this. Many of you must know the famous story of Adam and Iblis. You must know that Adam was taught the names of all things, which the angels were not taught, when the angels were told to give the names, they could not because they didn't have the knowledge. But when Adam was told to state the names, he named it all and the angels were amazed. And then, of course, we know that the angels in Iblis were commanded to prostrate to Adam. But in the simple story, have you ever asked yourself what was so amazing about the names that astonished the angels? Yes, it's true that Adam had all the knowledge and the angels did not, but the angels didn't have the knowledge because Allah didn't teach them. If Allah had taught them like he taught Adam, then the angels might have had the knowledge as well. So what's the big deal? This is where you're supposed to start searching for the answers. And inshallah, in this Ramadan, during the Surah Baqarah series that I will be starting, I will explain to you exactly what was so amazing for the angels. Yes, Adam had a profound amount of intellect and knowledge, but there was something else as well. When you figure out that hidden message, that's when you will start to feel that Allah is talking to you. But besides all of this, sometimes even listening to someone who is explaining the beauty of the Quran and the hidden messages in the Surah, at times people still feel that the Quran is not having any impact on them. They don't feel moved or spiritually different. This is where this opening verse of Surah Baqarah helps us tremendously. The Qur'an is going to be a book of guidance for the muttaqeen, those who have taqwa, those who truly fear evil and wrongdoing, and those who have hope that they can improve and become a better version of themselves to please their Lord. That is what taqwa means, to have fear and hope. But if the Qur'an is going to be guidance for those who have taqwa, then how do you gain this taqwa? You gain taqwa by doing two things. Clean your heart and improve your mindset. A heart that is soft will be able to absorb the words of the Qur'an in, in the same way that a soft piece of land is able to absorb water, allowing crops to grow. A hard heart will not allow the message of Allah to enter it. Just as a hard piece of land cannot absorb water, no matter how much water you pour over it. Similarly, a mindset that is fixed terrified of change, scared to go out of your comfort zone, always fearing what people will think. That is a mindset that can never taste the beauty of tawakkal. It can never have the courage to walk on the path of Islam. Even if the heart is soft, if the mindset is fixed, the Quran will not speak to you. 
What you need is a growth mindset in which you are willing to change, take risks, try something new, discover your potential, push yourself out of your comfort zone without the fear of what people will think. And inshallah, I plan to discuss all these things in greater detail in the upcoming Surah Baqarah series this Ramadan so that this time we can feel God's message entering our hearts. We need to learn how to clean that heart. We need to learn how to adopt a growth mindset so that this Ramadan, the Quran can actually talk to us. Assalamu alaikum.